All right, this is a different gate. And I really don't introduce that gate to them that much. So we'll see if she's gonna figure it out that this is a boundary. Now we work and generalized it enough, but we will also introduce a bunch of boundaries uh, for, you know, for you in the house when I get there. So I'll show you how to do this, but, and the gate is gonna slam um, because it's windy, but just because it opens or closes or whatever, she really should not be passing and crossing through it. I'm gonna back up again and then I'm gonna reinforce that. Now, you don't have to reinforce it every single time. You're only gonna reinforce it when you're either first introducing it or the first several days or just something brand new or whatever. You know, normally you just enforce that she does it, that's all. Um, I'm reinforcing it because this is not a generalized normal gate. Okay, good girl. Now, down, because that's a chicken area. We're not gonna um, leave her unattended here. Good job. Okay, so let me, let me secure this door. I have to take it with me. Okay. Okay. And we're gonna go opposite way, right? Okay. So now she's trying to figure out what we're doing. So she might, might not do the that here we go mm -hmm. it's gonna shut close on her again and i'm gonna open it up now again i didn't tell her to do anything she can stand she can do whatever she wants and this time around she's anticipating that so i'm not gonna even reinforce it because she's got it so yes i love it how she's doing it but i'm gonna only reinforce the you know best things and that was way too easy for her so hard things and weight in and uh hard things you need to reinforce and the perfect things you need to reinforce this is was very perfect but it is not hard okay good girl that's it you're so cute <laughs> Just came out for our afternoon work slash fun. Come. Good. Okay. She's very smart. She will try to lead you. So you're going to have to ignore all her advances because she's like, oh, we're working on a COME. Let, let her do the, her business. And I'll always reinforce for that. It's not necessary. It's not that. But what I have created here is I don't want them to pee over there. I want them to pee pretty much here. That is why I kind of reinforce that. I like my dogs to pee on one specific spot and poop there too. So I don't have to clean up the whole freaking yard and have pee spots everywhere. And she's pooping over here. <coughs> but that's because I was um, walking, didn't stop enough. Because my goal is to make this video come. versus you know because she shouldn't poop right now but hey she wanted to go on that's all good i know there's no rain days damn Say something. She's so little too. Wow. It's almost like a mini Azzy. 
I don't know if she is or not. Come. Very good. Very good. Okay. Come. She didn't expect it. Okay. That's why I did it. So besides times where you need her to come, when you practice, you make sure that you're ahead of her, meaning she's not anticipating that and she's not leading you into it. Now, I always do these videos because I want you to see that this dog will come to me like 40 times in, I don't know, two minutes. So <laughs> um, if she's not doing it for you, um, that's, you know, you gotta fix that. So it's not like she doesn't understand. She understands. But you see how she's like anticipating? No. She is totally pushing. Totally pushing. Yeah, you are. You're a pretty girl. Go on. You're a pretty girl. And she's pushing. But with your work. I don't want you to work. Forget about me, go enjoy your activities. I'm gonna tell her because she's trying to make me. We don't redo these videos, and the reason why everything is authentic is because whatever the troubles that I have with her, well, it's not considered trouble, but whatever it is that's happening to me, it's gonna happen to you. So I want to make sure that you see it how I deal with this. Because even though my intentions is to be to calling her, I'm not gonna call her because she's second she figured out that that's what we're working on. And again, when I just work with her, obviously it's gonna be one or two of them. But then she figured out, oh, that's more than one and two. So that's what we're doing. So I want you to do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. And if you will do it, she'll just eat. And when the time comes, it's not going to be important because she's going to be distracted and she's not going to want to do something. Right now, she wants to. Call me. Call me. It's like a toxic... <laughs> loving she's like well let's see if I'm do healing would that gonna give me anything no it won't and sometimes she won't forget about you and that's okay So I did that just so you can see that sometimes I will just do this in use a second and we're done. Okay. Okay, make sure to spend time lifting her up and make sure when she's handing on you, yeah, turn around like this. Let me just put it a little bigger. So that way, walk around. So make sure that this dog is not going bananas when you pick her up and holding her. Absolute make sure that she is just heading there like a, a dead little thingy. Just, there you go, and stop. And put her down. Perfect. So, down. That's how it should be and make sure that this is like this and pick her up all the time, not for the sake of picking her up, but for the sake of making sure 
that she's not protesting, that she's not uh, wiggling like a, because when I got her here, there was no way to picking her up. I mean, she was a squirmish little thing that's had um, so much power and you will be constantly ripped, you know, in all kinds of different directions. Um, so the second you lift her off the ground, she's supposed to just hang there, okay? With nothing, hang there, hang there, and hang there. So, um, very good girl. And uh, that's all you really have to do with her to make sure of it and correct her if she is wiggling or she's not willing to be picked up. Now, obviously, in your, as far as you go, you need to make sure she's comfortable. You can't be just like, you know, having her somehow, um, you know, just hanging somewhere where her back feet are not, I mean, her whole body is not supported or whatever. So it's your job to have her on the supporting position, but it's her, it's, you know, your job to do that and make sure that she's not falling. If she fall ever fell from your hands, or ever gonna fall from your hands, you're gonna have trust issues, which is not a good thing. So make sure that you have enough time you picked her up, that if you need to pick her up for any reasons, not that you do, but sometimes you do, and, and it's kind of part of the restraint training. This dog is nuts as far as uh, look at the specific body part, you know, or if you need something. I mean, um, it took me forever in the beginning to, if she gets a, freaking little leaf up her butt um i mean she's trying to take it off but you can't take it off because oh my god she's going nuts so um you know make sure that you restrain her all the time on a regular basis so when you need to restrain her for any reason she is okay and cooperating with you so look for cooperative behaviors meaning she's not resisting to you she's not um, you know, trying to like, oh, don't let me, don't let me, 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 yeah, well, that's what you, 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 you princess, your princess are like that, right? You are the, the princess. So anyway, um, I think you got the point, but just make sure that this is the deal with her. Pick her up, pick her up, pick her up just because she needs to be restrained sometimes. Good. Good. Um, excuse me, please. Good. She's like, oh, I don't know where I was. Very nice. Okay. Good, please. Good. Okay. Good. Very nice. So you wait just a little bit because sometimes she's so into the like, oh my God, did I do it? And then she forgets what she was doing. And sometimes it takes her a little bit to make sure that she is there, but don't let her wait too long. So it's like a double H sword. You don't want her to be slow uh, before you correct her, but you also want to give her just a minute to realize that she is not where she's supposed to be. Okay. Mm -hmm. Please. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Good job. Mm -hmm. Please. Very nice. Actually, it was absolutely perfect. So I am going to okay. Keep her. You want to feel with me? No, I'll take it. Here is another thing you should be practicing different stuff different whatever different locations every day we'll talk about this deeply because this is very important extremely important for her now you can reinforce her but never with the stuff that's on the floor and you have to practice with everything this dog loves to steal stuff i mean love 
love to steal. She lives to steal. So, um, whatever it's on the floor, it could be treats, it could be, I do it with pretty much anything and everything. And I'm also going to set up the yard, which is, we're going to talk about uh, doing the lesson with her because this dog needs to be set up as many times as you can. Other way, she's gonna try to steal it um, when she get any kind of chance. If she thinks she can outrun you, outsmart you, or outdo you, she will absolutely will do it. Now, I'm specifically holding her for a long time here because if you don't, and you don't do it on different sides of her, different places in your house, different places outside, um, again, we will um, we will talk about this in depth because if you don't control that and if she doesn't think that, um, you know, you ahead of her, she will be a terror in that, um, in that case. Absolute terror. Everything that dropped, she thinks is hers. Everything that's whatever she thinks is hers. So, uh, and she is fast and she is sure. She is absolutely sure what she's doing. So practice and practice and practice this. And as she grows up, um, she will become better if you practice or she will become a hell of a much sneakier. It's all up to you because this dog has a sneaky potential, um, but that's just you know that's just her i mean again because she always thinks she's ahead she's smart and she's the one who you know in charge i mean that's just the way she's thinking and then she has to watch you take all of this away and don't give her anything so these that's on the floor, she cannot get. Never. She needs to know that because if you're gonna give her this, okay, then what you're gonna tell her is just wait a little longer and it's gonna be yours in the end. No, it's not gonna be hers in the end. Absolutely not gonna be hers in the end. And if she thinks that that's gonna be hers in the end, she will not only try to steal it, she will also fight you for it. And how fast can you get to it versus how fast she can get to it. And trust me, she's gonna win that concept. <laughs> she's gonna win that con, um, what is it, you know? Contest, there you go. Thank you. So, yep, that's what it is. There's a good girl. Yeah. You gotta work hard, or they gotta work hard, or you are gonna take off running, girl. Take off running. Thank you. This place that she's never been. I spend time training in different locations. Majority of that is something like the Office Depot, rest, you know, um, you know, like there's um, not Office Depot. I'm sorry, Home Depot and. Lois and um, various, you know, parking lots of various stores. However, I don't go to these pet stores because first of all, it's dangerous because if anybody's dog is off leash or whatever, then she can get hurt. And I'm, I cannot put this, but the videos that we're doing here, so you can see that there's some dogs or whatever that she can meet. Those are the videos. Um, so she has never been in this store as well and we are gonna go there now she doesn't have to lay down she doesn't have to do any of this the only thing that she can do is pass through that um, boundary okay so that's basically where the boundary is so that's that okay I'm gonna make it um, again I'm gonna focus out and just because I grab in this doesn't mean she can come out this is, does not mean that and again, her position shouldn't be changing and she shouldn't be helping you. This dog is notorious for helping. So that's why we really need to like um, watch her state of mind. So she's not helping. Okay.
You will see it on the lesson. Hey, what are you gonna do? Perfect girl. Very nice. No, we're not crawling. So you see how she was? She was helping me to get closer to the, to the um, treat. Well, then the treat is disappearing. So if you are not going to be clear on that, your dog will be crawling and getting up and doing all kinds of stuff because now, now I can reinforce her for staying. I really can and I will. So that's that, but nothing for if she crawls to try to help you out by getting up or doing any of this. Sorry, I had to. I don't have hands enough to, good job. Again, I'm not talking to her. This is not something I'm gonna be telling her. Good job, good, very good job. Good girl. Now I'm not required any kind of heel where she's going and looking at me. I don't need that, but I will give her more treats for that, especially if something goes on. I'm gonna stop right here just because, now you see this again, that's a problem. I don't know if she did this with you before or not, but I don't wanna correct her for it because she's not doing, no, down. Good, she's not doing anything wrong, but that's the only time I'm going to give her a treat. That's a girl. Yeah, that's a mini shepherd. Okay. Thank you. Good. Come on. Everybody wants to talk to her. Hey, relax. Relax. Let's go through the gate again. Good. Good. Very nice. Now, anytime you have any kind of experience that is not 100%, you're doing this over again. Good job. Perfect. Good girl. Very good. Now, when the people are stopping and talking to her, hey, what are you doing? Perfect. She touched my foot, but she did not really. And again, now she's starting to crawl. I'm not reinforcing that. This is a kitty cat spots. Kitties are here. Not watching them. Very good. Now I'm going to reinforce her for staying. And again, don't be stingy. So what I was trying to say, when the people are approaching and starting to like talking to her and making all this, it's harder for her not to, and it's hard for you to correct her and all that good stuff. So you kind of twisting, turning around, and. Um, trying to leave the area people don't care i mean she's seen them videotaping i'm talking to you on the thing i'm training the dog and they're coming over and talking and sitting down on the floor doing it anyway so not really fair to her however she is um working on that i did not want her to be corrected that much so that's why i kind of sort of just let it go and talk her through I would correct it if I needed to, but she actually cared. Come on. Let's go. Good job. She actually cared for the color of this thing. Some dogs do, sometimes dogs. Some dogs don't. He's a baby. And we're gonna stop and see. Come on. And there's birds. Down. No, down. Good job. Had to correct her. Because she was right into it. Now, if you are correcting a dog, you cannot be giving her treats. So, so far, that's the only correction I have done in the whole um, set of videos. And usually we get that. Um, usually we get that. We do at least one correction during the walking because there's a lot of stuff going on. These birds are all over the place and they're moving. Perfect. Good job. Now there's a lot of food on the floor and I had worked so hard on this because she used to be a, nope, I didn't have to 
didn't have to correct her. I just said no and she listened. And this way around. No, down. I was waiting for her to be good, but she didn't. So we're gonna turn around here again. Yep, and do it again. No, very good. Still can't reinforce her. And we're gonna stop. And now I can reinforce her. Now I'm not pushing for reinforcement that much, but when it's too much going on, like there's people and this and that and cars and and then me almost hitting the door good job and we're just gonna go just come on good job didn't have to correct her i did not correct her she just expected to because she started to look at the thing sometimes she thinks she's gonna get corrected because she knows but very good she knows she's not supposed to be doing that so she is Exceptionally good. What are you gonna do? Down. No. Yeah, well, good job. Now, she did not get upset before. She's upset now because there's people behind us and she doesn't really want to go DOWN. So let me turn around and do it again. Come on. Good job. And that's another thing that's, and we're gonna do it again. Yeah, that's a good girl. That's a good girl, yeah. Don't help me because that eliminates your treats. Your dog is super, super, super helpful. Not in a good way, okay? She wants everything under her control, not yours. So we will spend a lot of time working on that when you're going to be there because it's very very important that you're going to nip that in the butt right away now i still have to do it and i still have to correct it but it's nothing compared to what it was when we started obviously now i'm going to reinforce her for what for staying not reinforcing her for down because she did not even though she did but she, then she moved so i'm going to open everything up so had to correct her twice um, and again, the numbers were the same because I didn't even touch the dial. But second time she got upset and the reason for that is because anytime she gets emotional because she really wants something, she's trying to appeal to your other side. So she will like, oh my God, I can't believe you didn't let me. Uh, yeah, I didn't let you. Okay. Okay. <gasps> Come on. Good job. Very good girl. So another thing is, um, as far as how hot the asphalt is and everything else, she has a lot of hair, but during the summertime, obviously I wouldn't be pressing for that. Or if it's not in the shade, I wouldn't be pressing for that. But obviously winter time, even though it is pretty, you know, like warm here, it's not gonna be a tremendously hot. Another thing is um, she is, um, you know, Sometimes we'll just lie down and I will like get her up and keep her going. So it is going to be up to you, but you have a plenty of time before summer for you to figure it out, you know, what you're doing. She's not stupid. She's not going to do it if something is, um, you know, not, um, not good. And you also going to figure it out, hey, you know, we shouldn't be lying down here. We shouldn't make a big deal out of it. However, that should be a routine. All of this should be a routine. I love you so much. You're such a good girl. Yeah, you are. All right, we're done. Good girl. So I don't really care what she does as long as she's not bothering him. And I'm going to reinforce her for that. I'm not going to give her any kind of commands. She's going to free and lose. But I prefer my dogs when I stop. But they kind of hang out around me. So she doesn't have to. But. Uh-oh. One's poopy. 
Well, good poopy. That's a good poopy. Yeah, it is good poopy. Very nice. Come on. Good. Very good. Good. Very nice. Down. Good. Good down. Good down. Now I did give her the DOWN thing. So this time I did tell her to stay on the down. She did good. Okay. All right. This is a crate she's never been into. Hey. <laughs> okay. Come on in. I know you've never been in here. It's okay. Come on in. In. Good girl. Good. Yeah. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off her key color. Color is off doesn't mean the dog can come out. The dog cannot come out, and I am going to reinforce that. But the fact is, dog cannot come out. Good. So you need to practice that with everything you get a chance to put her in, whatever that is, um, and leave her a little bit alone. She is very very stable. However. The more you practice it, the better she's going to be of being left alone in the strange, you know, places, whatever it is. So always try to use um, anything because if she ever gets to the vet, she's going to get stuck somewhere. If she ever goes anywhere but me, as far as the, you know, going there, she's going to get into the places where she has no idea, um, you know, where to, um, how do you call it? She has no idea. I was talking and then something came through my phone. I'm sorry. Some text. I was just making sure that there's nothing, nothing really, really, really bad. So she is normally really, really good um, at these stuff. She's brave, but you just keep working on it because she's not out of that age where, you know, she can still like, I don't like this. I don't want to be in here because if she gets put um, away, you know, she is going to uh, experience more stress than necessary if she's not used to these kind of things so again when they come up just because it's uh you know open doesn't mean that she can come up i'm gonna put this down here again. i'm gonna make sure that i'm gonna put this on before i take her out right Force that and that is how it should be absolutely this is how it should be so open crate does not mean I can come out and this is never means I can come out boundary is everything with this dog okay good job please good job good job Sometimes she goes back and forth, but hello, hello. come on in. Oh, yeah. Hi, I one. Now people should never do this. However, that's the point of the training. So the training has to be as hard as you can possibly think of so when you do this 
in between each other, you absolutely can do it. Now your dog is pressing the boundaries. Now as long as her feces, you see her little feces, they're not off the place, I am gonna be okay with that. However, that's the issues. She is always pushing her boundaries. You gotta be really, really careful with this. She's like on the end of her rope all the time. If you give her any rope, she'll take all of it. Now, Amanda is being really bad. And that's how you should be with the dog. So you should desensitize your dog to be okay with all the baby talk and all this stuff. All right, come up there and like, now see this little toes? I almost corrected her, but then she figured out that she was wrong. So that's that. But just understand, see, I corrected her. Good for that. She's trying to get her distracted. All right, and you can leave because there is really no work here going. So with your dog, it's a constant battle of how much you give her and how much she's willing to take. So anytime you give her 10 feet, she's taking 10 and a half. It's just in her nature, right? So you can do this, um, you know, right by her and maintain complete and clear, you know, boundaries, or you can let stuff go and then you're gonna have a dog that's gonna take a mile out of you. So, is up right now. Um, she is going to, um, now the second the pressure off of her, you know, got off, just the pressure off Amanda, she's kind of sort of more relaxed because Amanda was putting a lot of pressure on her. So as up right now, she's more relaxed and she's not on the tippy toes, you know? So it does get better, uh, but you see how she's already moving? She's scooting, 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 scooting. And the further I am, the more she's scooting, okay? And that's again, the nature of your dog. So you really have to, really have to be very careful with that. Um, okay. Now, as far as um, how everybody else have to be, they, you have to be kind of like Amanda when one of you is coming home or your kids are, or your friends that are actually willing to help you with your dog training or your family members that are willing to. And as of right now, um, she is lying down, but she's touching the floor. So place, no place, good. I am correcting her and putting her back on the place. And although I wanted to give her food, she's not getting any because she is trying to. Now she can lay down. There's a whole big place behind her, right? But what is she doing? She's trying to push the limits. And yeah, well, that's your uh, saliva on the floor. That's you panting because, you know, everything is takes so much energy out of you. Yeah, I know. Because you have to be crazy. That's all. Um, so yeah, that's about it. Amanda, can you turn the light from another side? The light that's over there? Yeah. Just so we can see her better and her feet is better. There you go. Thank you. I forgot to turn this light on. Now, um, so everybody else who comes in have to ignore the dog because if they're not going to ignore the dog, then your dog is going to go nuts and no power in the world is going to stop her in the beginning. I'm not talking about later on. I'm not talking about in the beginning. So again, tippy toes, again, trying to get as fast as possible her reward. So, and she kind of sort of demands reward. Now, the more she demands reward, the less I'm, get, I'm handed it to her. Just so you know, if you feel like you're pushed by your dog, which is this is pushing, then less I am going to reinforce it. So I reinforced it heavily when Amanda just walked in. I reinforced it in the, when Amanda was putting the pressure on her, but she's not relaxing and I'm not going to reinforce that. She's sitting there in the end of the thing and she wants to get the hell out of here. So if she's going to go and relax just like that, you know, and I don't want her, no, yeah, back off. I don't want her feet touching the ground, period. If you have this kind of bed, if you have an elevated bed, if you have any kind of bed, her feet needs to stay inside of it. 
and yeah, she will push it. So again, no food for this. Why? Because she's pressing me on it. You cannot be letting your dog dictate when you give her attention, when you give her food, when you give her any of that. So. Now, people think that's cute, okay? And it is, it looks cute. But the thing is, she's trying to outsmart you, so good luck with that. If you're gonna go on her, you know, on, on her decision-making, then you're always gonna have this kind of dog who makes all the decisions for you and you pretty much lose that. Again, she has one big place over there. She's sitting over here on the edge, waiting to be released. So I don't retake these videos because I really, really uh, want you to see the troubles that you're going to face. So if I have troubles with it, you're gonna have troubles with it. So it's not really a trouble if as long as you're consistent. You see how she's, although pushing sometimes, and she's like, oh, it's not a big deal. She knows exactly what the big deal is. She knows exactly what that is. She knows exactly what she's going to be. So now, if you have a company, either too close to the, when I, when I brought her home, or you have a company that you can't control, please, please, please don't keep her out, keep her in the crate and don't don't uh, make her, you know, fail. So you only have to be doing this. You see how she's pushing? Look at her. She's closer and closer and closer. And like, why am I sitting here? And why am I not getting reinforced? You're not, because you're pushing me. So it's going into eight minutes. So I'm gonna finish this video. Will I, would I release her without making a video? No, I would wait for another five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever. I just can't wait on the, on the video um, that long because nobody can watch this. Or you see if she's backing off, maybe she will back off. That is fantastic. Guess what she's gonna get? Food right away. That's what she's gonna get. She's gonna relax again, she's gonna get more food. She's gonna be on a tippy toe, she's not gonna get anything. But you get my point, right? So you can reinforce relaxed dog. You cannot be reinforcing a dog on the edge sitting there demanding either be released or have food. Now she knows the relaxation give her that, but she literally can't help herself.
Down. Good. Good girl. Go on. Down. Now, see how she did it? Didn't like it at all because she was crawling closer to me and doing all that stuff. And that's because I was nice to her. Now, I specifically did that to show you this. So when I'm in business, she's all business. When I'm going and dee 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 dee, She's already got the point that when you do this baby voice, when you do all this stuff, then I don't have to listen to you. I'm cute. That's as far as I got to go. So make sure you understand that. And uh, we need to change that reaction between your baby voices and your baby things and actually working for you. Okay. Down. Good. Now that's mean and business dog again. Okay. So I already got the point what we're gonna do, so down. Good. I don't need your help. So you see how her elbows uh, got off the ground? I backed off again. She wants to control all the interactions. All of them. So if you allow her, she will do that the whole time. And it doesn't seem like a big deal, but it is because this dog just gonna do whatever it is she wants to do, even if it's um, kind of sort of modified what you want to do. Too smart. Okay. And if you don't pay attention to any of those things, you're gonna have a dog who does what she wants and pretty much never does anything that you want her to do. Down. Good. Okay. I have Amanda here for distractions. Because she is also manipulating other people into doing stuff her ways. Down. So again, I had a conversation that did not concern you, her, so I had a conversation, blah, 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 blah. And you saw how she did this. If you didn't see, rewind it. She didn't go down right away. She turned around, went a couple steps, then she goes down. You're gonna reinforce that and you're gonna be happy with that. That's all you're gonna get. Okay, and it's gonna get just worse, obviously. Down. So when you talk to a dog, when you're absolutely talking to a dog about nothings, you know, like sweet nothings, you just talk to a dog, she is, okay basically taking everything you know away from her ears now she's just anticipating you see that we started this she's like okay well that's what we're doing so she's anticipating the next move so Obviously, we're not doing those kind of exercises all the time. Down. 
and she's starting to just completely not be sharp but she's like i'm bored with this this is over five minutes i don't want to do this and that's why i do it okay down so she wasn't reinforced now she's like okay i'll do it right because i will be reinforced again if you don't think that's how smart she is that's how smart she is she's more smart than this okay now this anticipation if i didn't do the video obviously i would never do that but i am doing this because I'm just showing you that sometimes you have to work on the same thing. Now, why do we work on the same thing? Down. We work on the same thing because this dog is, is like, okay, well, a couple times may make sense. Why in the heck are you pushing me to do a 20 times of the same thing? I know what it is. And then they start questioning your judgment. That's what we're trying to avoid because you should be as unpredictable as you can and then on the same hand you have to push your agenda onto dog like this all the time because this dog will be on to you 24 7 pushing her agenda so this is not an easy owning fun breed this is not a good pet this is a dog who is just going to spend all her life trying to see what she can accomplish with you <laughs> and how well will, will you get trained so we'll spend a long amount of time talking about this and obviously you will understand everything that you need to understand about her but just un just all I want to tell you she is extremely manipulative pushy and only wants to do what she wants to do that's a whole mission in life again i can't disagree with her but it is fun when you just do what it is that you want to do but that's not a dog to relax with that's basically what i'm trying to say I'm just gonna go and try to leave you watching her for as long as I can, but I will make her bigger later, so I don't know. I'm just walking away, sorry. <laughs> I don't know if you can see her or not, but I'm going behind this and then I'm gonna make your dog bigger. So she can do up to 40 minutes on downstay with no distractions and about 20 minutes with moderate distractions, which is like this, is considered moderate distractions. Um, why is it considered moderate distractions? Well, because this is the place where we normally work. Now you see how much wind we got. There is uh, all kinds of stuff happening. There's squirrels, there's birds, there's neighbors, there's neighbors' dogs. All of that, there's Amanda walking back and forth there. So all of that is, although distractions, but in a place where we consistently work. So I can't really call that it's heavy distraction thing because that's where it is. Now, heavy distraction thing would be like, uh, you know, anywhere outside of your house, that would be a heavy distraction. In, even if there's nothing going on, but it's the place she's never been, that will be a heavy distraction zone. So that's that. Now, just because I told you she can do a 20 minutes, that's not how you start. You start with three to five minutes when I bring her back and make sure that you succeed first two, three days like that. And then what's happening, and I think Amanda is walking over there, that's what she's looking at. Um, 
so then what is happening is um, I don't know what the heck was I talking uh, got distracted by Amanda just as much as your dog got distracted by Amanda <laughs> oh okay so when you just when I just brought her home so make sure that you do a two, two, three, a two, three, five minutes downstairs by the end of two days. And then your goal is to do about 20 minutes uh, by the end of two, first two weeks after she comes back. So gradually you're gonna extend this time. Why are you extending this time? Is because you're extending and building up your relationship. And we usually, you know, you usually start building it immediately when I bring the dog back. However, um, sorry, this is it's just too, too windy. Um, that's not necessarily uh, when you're gonna be done building it. So, I mean, you're building it all the time and you maintain it to build to the day that the dogs die, but your main thing should be done by about two weeks when she realizes that whatever she has learned, whatever she has done here, there's gonna be no, there's going to be the same rules that apply in her own house. So she'll try you first three days the hardest, and then she should start to give in into your routine and your lifestyle more. And then by the end of two weeks, the dog should be completely relaxed and just doing what it is that she's supposed to be doing. So it's been four minutes. I'm going to wait for another minute before I come back to her. Now, also when I bring her back, um, what I want you to do is anytime your dog is on the downstay or the place, the first six months, at least, you need to treat this as a, um, as a, a promise kind of sort of uh, situation. So what you, what's happening, if I leave you on a stay, that means I promise you, I will come back and get you. I promise you, you don't have to go look for me because the next thing is going to be a C O W M E C O M E. Sorry. C O M E. Right. Because if you say that, okay. And your dog is after the stay breaks it and go and next thing that's happening, she's chasing it, chasing you down. Then the dog is never going to comfortably and relaxly relaxing on the stay because what if you out of sight? The next thing I gotta go find you or possibility I got to go find you. That creates a lot of stress. So you see the dog completely relaxed. Now your dog has a big problem. So I'm gonna start walking because it's already past that. I can't walk on this. So I have to kind of walk on um, this setting. And that's by the way where we are, right? So um, I'm gonna make it a little bigger just so you can see it a little bit. So anyway, so if you treat it as a promise, your dog is going to be safe and secure and she's not going to be stressed out. Now, she had, she has, and she had major issues with um, patience, right? Not a patient breed, not a patient dog, not a patient pretty much anything. So you got to make sure that, and a smart too. So you can see she's already ants in the pants. She's already, let me just stop and do this. Her butt is already moving. She's kind of sort of ready to jump up and do stuff. Because she's like that, you need to make sure that you keep her guessing all the time as to when she's gonna be um, done with the exercise. So a lot of times you see people come back to the stay and immediately release the dog. Well, then every time you're gonna start walking, you see how she's moving? She's ready to pump up, you know, like she's ready to jump up. That's kind of the dog you have. So it's not her fault, it's not anybody's fault. This is just the way she is. And anytime I move closer to her, look at her. She barely can maintain her position and everything is moving. So. If you make that association that, hey, I come back and every time I come back, I release you and I'm gonna go straight to you and release you. Your dog is gonna pop up every single time. You see how, how she is right now? Ready to pop up. 
Now she's not popping up, she's maintaining herself. However, and now we're looking pathetic because we're like, oh my God, let's get on with it. Everything that's have to do with the movement, she will absolutely be the professional at. But everything has to do with still, being still, being uh, patient, that's gonna be your you know, Achilles heel. So it's gonna be a really tough on her. So that means you're gonna work on this the most. So that becomes a nothing to your dog, okay? I'm just gonna come back again. Now, just because I'm pretty much on top of her, you're gonna still think that I'm not gonna do anything either. So yes, I'm back. No, you're not released. You're not released. No, I'm not reinforcing you. Nothing is really happening. And I can walk away just as much or turn it away or do whatever. Then I come back again. You see that anticipation? Even though after working all this time, she still is anticipating. So if you're not gonna pay attention to that, your dog will be popping up at no time because she thinks she is smarter than you and she thinks she's about five steps ahead of you. So if that's where the people of these kind of breeds completely lose their training is because they are not willing to confuse the dog with their behavior and they get into the routines in which dog is predicting everything that they're doing. Now, the second it's gonna get in the routine, your dog will rush you and your dog will show you what's the next step and will completely skip the steps because they're unnecessary in her opinion. Let's just go and let's just do stuff. Why am I supposed to? And as long as, you know, the worse she gets now, I don't have to correct her or do anything. I'm just willing to reinforce her. Now I'm gonna reinforce her, okay, with a treat. And that's about it. I'm still not releasing her because if you're gonna give a treat and release her, the second that she is swallowing this treat, she's, sorry, I have some phone call. I gotta turn this off. There you go. So the second you are gonna get to it, your dog is gonna break it. So again, make sure sometimes you release her right away. Sometimes you release her five minutes later. Sometimes you release her uh, 30 seconds. Sometimes you don't release her until you go three times away, okay? Whatever that is, it's got to be, um, you got to be ahead of her. And this is a smart, smart, fast dog. So you got yourself a really interesting, you know, work. So before you release her, you don't really have to reinforce her with the treat or anything else. Um, I normally just, just reinforce her for staying um, after I come back, maybe once, if she's staying longer than 20 minutes, she will get probably three to five treats sometimes randomly. However, I am not going to reinforce her right before I let her go and release her. Releasing her is already a big, big, big reinforcement. So you don't have to do this. How you release her, I prefer with her. Please don't, you know, release her verbally. I would actually come back and touch her. Now, she knows what the release the verbally is, but if you're gonna keep using that, then you're gonna get into the habit of just, you know, releasing her not when you are directly in front of her. I mean, directly with her. So I prefer the tapping. So that way we're gonna do, okay, <laughs> good job. And she knows she can go and she knows she is free to go. Very good. Very good. Yeah, I know you know that there's doggy there, but you've been doing very good. Good job. Let that doggy come in. Okay. Good job. Good. Perfect. Perfect. Very nice. There's people right there. Right there. Good job. We're gonna close this. Sorry, I got. Uh oh. This phone thing is not good. I just wanted to make sure that you can see better. All right, let me close the thingy. 
and that's a really close car right here. So it's got to be on the downstay no matter what. Very good. Um, don't be stingy outside with the reinforcements. Um, actually, you know, when she's going here, um, all I'm doing is literally good job. And we are at the good. Very nice. Easy. I know you're excited. But... Come on. Good. Oopsie. Good. Okay. Very nice. Good girl. And we're gonna stop and we're gonna relax. So um when you stop, the dog's supposed to go on the downstay by herself. So the requirements of your healing is to sorry i have a too many things and too many hands so the requirements for me healing is for her to for you to be moving so if you're moving i'm not telling her what to do really not i'm just she's never been here good good very nice good job never been here a lot of distractions a lot of stuff to sniff we ain't sniffing anything. Good job. Now, I always use these kind of things. Um, don't like when she puts the thing on it. I am not going to correct it, but I'm going to tell you that I would not praise it when she puts uh, her feet on my feet. So, there was a person there, but right now there's nobody in this room. So, I am going to practice a down stay with her always do very nice now she can be looking she just when she's healing and whatever it is uh, but cannot be pulling on me so just because I'm picking up this doesn't mean anything so my whole setting is gonna be like right through here things to think about good job yeah good girl no no come on hey good don't do that i'm gonna turn around and we're gonna stop here hey hello hey good down thank you So the reason I did that is because there's a person behind us that were literally like smiling and touching their ties and trying to get her attention. So you saw her getting a little distracted. So that's why I turn around and let, let her actually look at her and get over herself. And that's where I had to say to her and repeat it. I didn't have to correct her. Now, I don't like that at all, so I'm gonna just move my feet. I'm not stepping on her or doing anything, but I am gonna get her off my feet. And I'm also not gonna reinforce it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, and if she doesn't touch it, there you go. No, no, good. I corrected her for that. Good, very nice. Now she can get her reinforcements. Good job. Now this is tough this is right here all these bones and her nose working so sometimes she's not gonna even look here because if she looks at it she will break it so she's not gonna want to do it he's a good girl yeah you were and when i stop anywhere and that was good you see that so she did not put she is big on this and she thinks that's kind of sort of comforting thing, but it's really not because it stops you. It's kind of like a blocking on her part because if you can't walk straight, then you can't just walk. Good job. Good girl. Good job. It's a good girl. Now this focus heel that she's giving me right now it's not a necessity whatsoever. Um, I don't really care for that focus heel. I'm gonna reinforce it, but 
that's just because she gets more treats for the focus heel versus that she's looking around and doing whatever. So that's that. Good job. And what we're gonna do, I'm gonna stop right here. And she's doing this now again. I don't want her there. So basically I just shake off my her foot from my foot and I'm not reinforcing it. So those are the consequences for that. Now you have to be able to open the car, do whatever you need, open the crate, do whatever. And she cannot be, um, you know, pushing you or jumping in the car or doing anything or even getting up. So later on, this is how it's gonna be if you're gonna make it a deal. There's a person right next to us putting this groceries away. So now I opened the crate, I did everything, and she still is on the downstay. Just because everything is open and she can go doesn't mean that she needs to go. Now I did reinforce her for staying. I might or might not reinforce her one more time. It's just gonna depend on how much. Um, so like there's, you know, if there's a lot of distractions, then I will reinforce her. If it's not a lot of distractions, which is end up being not, I mean, yes, it's a person passed by, but it wasn't anything like special for her to do. Now there's a truck starting, which is starting right next to it. Now I'm gonna zoom out um, option on my phone. So it's much closer than it shows on this. It's basically, that's where that is. So it is close, but I'm gonna zoom out part of it. All right, and when you're ready, okay. good job, good job. And in the beginning, I want you to leave the dog on the leash and everything else uh, before. We're going to figure it out what you're doing with your with your stuff. But that's how she should be. Uh, we'll discuss all this driving thing. Um, how she drives with you and everything else. You are so pretty. Yeah, you are. We're done. This is very important exercise. No. Okay. No. Okay. No. Very, very, very important. No. Okay. No. Okay. Now, in contrast, if I didn't say anything, right? So if I didn't say anything, she can take it. But if there's a no in there, that means stop whatever you're doing right now. And at that point, it means eating. Oops. Good job. Okay, let me just do that. Good job. Mm -hmm. So a dog can do absolutely anything on this plate as long as it stays on it. So anything can become place. Let me just go underneath all this. I mean, I'm not underneath, but over there. And make sure that you can see her. It's pretty bad quality because it's last video of the day. Um, very nice. So anything can be to include, but not limited to on your dog bed, 
um, chair for the, this size of the dog. Um, it could be, you know, literally electric tape um, on the tile floor or, you know, whatever. So anything that is identifiable to the dog and just make have to make sure that dog is can understand and clearly see the boundaries so that's it that's all it is that needs to be done and when you send the dog it could be in any room the only the only thing that i would say not to do is don't not to have a two places in accessible area so if she is um, have access to two rooms and you send her to the place and there's in each room there is a place she's going to get confused which one you're talking to so unless it's very obvious like the closest one or something like that so don't expect her to go find all the places however um, it could be something that is in a particular location or it can be something that's movable and you can go back and forth through that you can introduce stuff as a place anytime you want them to be to have one so it's not a big deal whatsoever and um, I don't normally do too long of the places so I am going to keep going there and release her however um, you know nothing really particular about this so let me just put it right here very good I can't walk now you see how she is got off that place so elbows are in it so I'm gonna be okay with it so in this particular case but I'm still going to reinforce her away from the edge and never on it so I'm gonna reinforce her by just stepping in and kind of sort of uh, pushing her with my feet so she is not on that um, edge she always trying to help you saw it clearly on each and everything so if she her elbows will be off or her feet is a touch in the ground if the bed is um, you know like away from the whatever it is that you create your criteria but you better be very specific because your dog see how she's trying to help by getting as close as possible to me now in this case she just barely moved the feet but she did not move closer to me that's why i reinforce her but if she would try to help me um let me, i'm just gonna see if she's gonna try to help me i'm gonna come up right here and she's being very very good but normally she's gonna try to get on the edge of it just to you know push you to the limit and don't ever be worried about keeping those boundaries because if you will your dog will walk right through all the boundaries you give her one foot she'll take um you know a mile this dog is not something to mess with with the boundaries um again i don't need her help so she did not move i am going to reinforce her so and i am not letting her have anything that she dropped that's not gonna happen so because of where she was, I am going to leave again. I'm not going to go as far, but I want her to do the right thing. And I want to be able to come back and reinforce her properly. So I'm not being a butt to her. Actually, you're going to have a really hard time with a dog. And dog is going to have a really hard time if your boundary will constantly fluctuate. So if today you're accepting, you know, her feet being off then tomorrow you're not because tomorrow you see that now she's halfway out that's irritating that's stressful and that actually makes no sense now i'm gonna come back and see that her feet are inside of everything and if they are then she's gonna get reinforced and she's gonna get and they are now she pushed it a little bit on the tail i'm gonna move her you see how i'm just i'm not stepping on her but i'm like see like i'm pushing her body language wise and she knows what that means to get the head back she absolutely knows what that means i'm not stepping on her i'm not doing anything it's just a simple body language 
And this dog, because she's so pushy, that's why she responds to that, because she does that to you. You just kind of sort of okay with that. So I want my dog to be on that place the right way. So I will do this until she does it right. Now, in this case, I'm not going to correct her, right? Because there's really nothing to correct. She is banding the rules, but she's not like ignoring the rules. She's trying to band them, right? So there's a line that I put for myself. And the line is, her elbows are supposed to be on that place. Now she really can't see where her butt is. Most of the times dogs don't know what their butt is, unless you're doing exercises and tricks and whatever to actually show her where the butt is. Most of them don't know where those butts are. So because of that, I'm not gonna punish her for if her butt is off, but she absolutely knows where her elbows are and where her feet are. She absolutely knows that, okay? That's why I'm so, so picky on this. Now I will correct if her criteria is not met. Criterias are elbows on the place in this spot, right? Any place elbows have to be on that, right? Now feetsies, you saw me doing in the house with, with her feetsies touching the ground. I mean, she was elbows there, but she wasn't, but she was almost hanging off of it because she really wanted to go, right? So that's where you put this. But if you are just uh, making sure that you can reinforce and you're pushing it for her to actually get reinforced with the treats, and the only time she gets treats, see how she's trying to make me go faster? Look at all her body language, how she's trying to create that. Now I understand these breeds are bred for that, right? They're bred to be ahead of you. They're bred to be independent. They're bred to be uh, a worker on its own and just, you know, um, bend the rules all the time the way it seems, you know, proper for her. So this is not a, um, you know, defect. This is a norm for them and you need to address it as a norm because it is and i love it um, about them they're funny they are you know pushing the envelope all the time but if you are consistent with your um criterias then you will win and you will have a great relationship and your dog will be constantly working and constantly actually using her brain so that's a good thing about her and i'm gonna come back okay Good job. All right, go down. All right. Impulse control. Um, I mean, there's gonna introduce her to this, the one that's annoying thing, and then the toys. So if you, the point of this, if you say to your dog that it needs to be on the down stay or just down i don't use the stay as you know but uh down means down until i tell you to release it but um i am it doesn't matter what else happened in the world it's gotta be um it's gotta be dog gotta be down sorry i was distracted by the neighbor's dogs at the fence. Okay, go ahead, Amanda. One second, actually one second. I'm gonna make it a little bigger so I can see you. Go ahead. She's not a fan, but she is dealing with this. Very good. Now with all this wiggle butt thing, uh, we'll talk about this, but it's very, very important for you not to let her do it aggressively over there again. Just aggressively. She's not a fan. However, she's dealing with it. That's all that matters. So the stuff needs to be done, the one that she doesn't like and the one that she does like. So it could be a vacuum, it could be a whatever. It could be a fan, um, the hair, whatever, hair drying thingy, you know. Hair dryer, there you go. <laughs> but all I'm saying is um, she's going to be able to handle that and doesn't get off. So 
that basically means if you're on a down stay, you're gonna have to trust me that no matter what's happening in the world around and no matter how excited you get, you're not going to break it. That's basically what this thing is. So if the children playing ball outside, that doesn't mean that I can get involved if I'm on the DOWN, right? Go ahead, Amanda. We'll start with the ball and all this. So this is the stuff that you know she's absolutely love. Okay, go ahead. Very good. Oh my God, this toy is ridiculous. Now you see how she is, although moving, she's in the same spot. We'll talk about this extensively. Your dog cannot be moving forward. Could not be crawling, unless you teach her how to crawl in my click class, clicker class, trick class. That's the only time when she's allowed to crawl. And I'm sure you'll have no problem teaching her that. Go ahead. Perfect. Those are all the toys she is regularly playing with. So go ahead and pick him up. Thank you. And then you're gonna do it from another side. Now you see how she gets excited? One second, I'm just gonna show you that differently. Here we go. She got really, really excited, but she maintained herself. So I'm gonna go and actually see how she's not moving forward. That is about four weeks of work. I'm not joking. That was the hardest thing I actually worked with her on. Because that dog was moving all over across the yard. Anytime she'll get excited. And, okay, Amanda, let's do um, one more time. Okay. She wants to. See how she is? She wants to, but... Oh. Nope. Good. I had to help her with a no a little bit. Very good job. And you see, when she's like that bad, I'm going to stop. I'm not going to even come up. Pick up everything. Really good. Very good girl. They're just dogs at the fence. Very good. Now she's anticipating being released. Because it's like, oh my God, we're done. So she's anticipating being released. She is not going to be released because of all that anticipation. Mm -hmm. I'm going to come up right to her. Now, if you're gonna see this as cute, and as you're gonna see it as, well, that doesn't bother anybody, then you're gonna lose the dog. Meaning, um, you're gonna lose this dog in your training. Because she's gonna do this, that's gonna go into the crawling, that's gonna go into running, that's gonna go into jumping, that's gonna go into every other thing. So, this should be your you know, line that you're not going to be stepping over. If your dog is anticipates you and pushes you to release it or pushes you to give her a treat or pushes you to play with her or pushes you to pay attention or pay, whatever it is, she's pushing you and she's very, very pushy. This dog is extremely pushy. So if you don't push back and you don't ignore it or you don't push back either or 
that dog is never going to be reliable on anything. Why? Because she's going to control you. That's what's going to be. She is a very strong, strong, strong willed dog. So just because it's nice, that does not change anything. So it's kind of sort of passive aggressive way to get her own way. So just because a person or a dog is nice doesn't mean that when they push, for whatever it is they are pushing is acceptable and that's the same with your dog she is extremely willed hard willed dog very hard so yes it's cute no you cannot ignore that okay good girl now she can go nuts for all I care about I would prefer that every time you cut something, you are paying her after each and every nail, just because it's gonna create a very good um, stuff with it. Go ahead. Okay, go ahead, another one. Very nice. should do two but I would prefer that you do it when you start it only do one nail at a time and go ahead back feet I don't think they need it but just kind of go through the motions uh, back feet of hers usually don't need to be cut uh, we don't need to lift it we just make sure you can see it and then make sure you can kind of sort of get to the nail that's so there you go that's all that needs to be done really good Very good. Very, very good. Now, the definition of this, you only care about her being on the down, okay? So if she's on the down and she's not, um, because her elbows will not be moving, her feet will not be moving if she's on the down. So if she's not on the down, then you're not gonna be able to cut anything. So that's your criteria for the most part and go ahead and go through it just one more time without cutting it but pretend to cut it so a lot of times um they get sensitive and i don't recommend anybody to do you know to um wait for groomers or vet vets i just recommend you to do a one or two nails per week and then you keep everything your dog together you know what i mean so everything will be good so now you can do it with the grinder, you can do it with the cutter, which is the clippers that we use is the hardest one um, to kind of kind of cut the nails. That's why we do this because they're more scared of them than you know anything. So that's basically all this is. Okay, and also weekly, I do would like um, everybody to do the general checkups and get her used to doing this. All right, so let's start with the mouth. You'll be able to see everything, every tooth, everything, and good. Okay, and then another one, another side, so you can see it. Perfect, good, that's it. Do it one more time. good all right she's not gonna enjoy this but she'll get better and better and better in the beginning she was not happy about this at all go ahead eyes and ears and obviously grooming so when it don't just just keep it open just pull it apart keep it open and look at it okay good you know please make sure you're not touching the eye itself you just kind of sort of making sure that you can see it 
because if anything ever happens to it, you should be able to look in the eye. Now, the more you spend time doing this when the dog is not hurt, the better your things are gonna be when the dog is. Better your chances are in better looking. Go ahead and do the ears. So all of that, the potential issues there. So um, she needs to learn to stand, you know, to stay still for all this stuff for you. I mean, as still as your dog can. I mean, it's, you know. And again, if that's going to become something that is uh, weekly, you know, monthly done, then it's going to be so much better when you actually have to either medicate or do something. Very good. Very good. Okay. Perfect. And go ahead and uh, brush. basically how we're doing and then afterwards obviously she can be on the side she can be whatever but no no I'm not gonna reinforce that because she's crawling so be very sensitive of what you're doing as far as how you're reinforcing so the second she start crawling this is not a trick this is not anything so I am not going to reinforce that no matter how good she was before she was reinforced and now Anytime she crawls, I am no longer interested in making it no down. I'm just keeping her on a DOW and that's all. And we're done. So she thinks I'm taking her with you with me. I know it's dark here, but I didn't want her to think that it's set up. This is what I want without talking, without doing anything. Just stay in the house. I don't care where you are. I don't care what you're doing. However, if I did not ask you to go with me, you're staying there no matter what. I can also like make it harder on her by trying to open the car because I came up right to the car and she likes to go in the car however now she see she's choosing to lie down she's choosing to do this and that is what i want from her so unless i am calling you with me out that is what you're doing so that was perfect and i'm just gonna go back to it and when you come back we are not acknowledging her at all. We're just going in, just like we came in, and that's it. All right. Now, this is only going to work if you have um, another dog who is um, a trained. If it's not a trained dog, or it's a dog that on the leash and doesn't bother you. Um, if it's a loose dog that has no manners, you should never put your dog in this kind of situation. So let's just see. Uma. Go ahead. Around. Keep going. Keep going. 
Keep going. Down. Perfect. And then reinforce your dog. Very good. Very, very good. And then I'm gonna reinforce my dog. You see how I'm not repeating myself? I'm not doing anything because I did not release her. So that's all that's gonna matter. What's up? What's up? Around. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Chair. Good. And I'm gonna actually go reinforce my dog and leave yours alone here because I can. And then I'm gonna come back and reinforce yours. I'm gonna reinforce it heavy because this is hard. That's heavy and that's hard. Around. Down. Okay, girls. Your girls are good. Very nice. Very nice. It's really nice. Very nice. Chair. Good job. Good job, girls. We're done.